All right, everybody, hello and welcome. As always, I am Sean. This is In The Mix, a very special first episode. It's another one season one to save, this time with Brighton and Hove Albion. You might be wondering why Brighton? I say this all the time, but so much of the content on this channel is going to be driven by what you guys want to see. And last week, David Barnett, down in the comment section below, asked us to do a season with Brighton. And I thought, sure, why not? He's been commenting on stuff lately. He's been watching every minute of every video we put out. He gets to see what he wants on this channel. And you could as well. You have to let me know what you guys want to see in future. If you've got saves you want to check out, you've got players you want me to look at, things you want me to do in existing saves, by all means, drop it down in the comment section below. I am more than happy to have a look and continue to give you guys the content that you want and deserve. Now, because because this is the start of a new series, because it's just going to be a really quick one season with the club this year, we've got quite a bit that we need to get through. So we've got like a tactic, we've got a squad, we've got transfers in and out, a whole bunch of different stuff that we're going to go through. We're not going to waste too much time. We're going to jump straight in and let you know how we're doing. Now, before we get stuck in, before we get started, the reason that I was kind of like, yeah, let's do Brighton. One is because they've got two great Australian players, uh, Matt Ryan and Aaron Moy. But then also, randomly, at the start of this week, Aaron Moy just randomly decided that he was going to leave Brighton. Uh, seemingly like kind of kiss of death after I was like, yeah, go on, we'll do Brighton as a save. He immediately leaves which is ridiculous to me. Now, Aaron Moy is a player that's been super important to me for quite a few years. I'm a Melbourne City member in the A-League, the local competition within Australia, and he has been arguably the best player that we've ever had, perhaps even the best player the competition has had since its inception. Definitely the player that like we had at a young level that's gone on to the highest level. We have had some great players like Del Piero was here, Dwight York was here, a few that were very good but not in their peak. He might be the one that came, hit his peak, and then moved on to a larger club and competition in the Premier Division. If we look at here, this is a highlights package. I'm turning off the sound because it could be horrible. That goal there, wonderful finish from him. I'm somewhere. I'm one of these blurry blobs that you can see here because that's where my season ticket is or that's where my membership seat is. So for that reason, he's always been one of my favorite players. I cannot wait to use him again this week. And given that he's leaving the club, it becomes a bit of a farewell. So we might as well do something special. And that is grab this bad boy right here. This is not going to fit properly, is it? I mean, other than looking like a giant condom, it is uh, pretty much a spitting image for Aaron Moy, I think. It's definitely not supposed to go over my ears either, but I just don't think it's going to fit the way it's supposed to or the way it looked like on Amazon. But there we go. looks pretty fantastic. We're an Aaron Moy tribute show from here on out. He's been made our captain for the season. He's on all of our set pieces except throw-ins because he might go on throw-ins later. I don't know. But basically, this is the Aaron Moy show for the next five days. If you can't handle that, then maybe come back next week when we're back at Isle of Man. So, Brighton. We've got to get into Brighton and how they've done over the last few seasons. They, of course, came up into the Premier Division at the end of the 2016-2017 season. They finished 15th in their first year in the Premier Division. They finished 17th last season, just staying in the league. And this season just gone in real life, which you don't see here. They finished 15th in the division itself. They were clear of the relegation spots by how many points is that? Seven points. So we want to try and finish 15, above 15th. Really, we want to try and finish in the top half. Maybe go on a Carabao Cup run. Maybe go on an FA Cup run. Maybe try and add some symbolware for them. You can see here they've won League One, Community Shield back in the day, League Two, a Cala Gas League Premier Division, an English Third Division South in the 1950s. No real cup competitions, no elite level competitions. Community Shield's impressive. I wonder when they did win that. But really, they are at the highest level that they've like consistently competed at, at least as far as what we, we can see back to 98, 99. Now, their actual like, baseline squad isn't terrible. They've got some really good players. They've got Lewis Dunk, who's a very good defender, and English as well, and 27 in his prime, can play the ball quite a bit, which is fantastic. They've got Davey Propa, Adam Webster, Shane Duffy, Aaron Moy, of course, we've already spoken about, Bernardo, Leandro Trossard. They've got some really good players and some good high potential players in there as well. Alexis McAllister, Argentine, left winger slash number 10, who looks to be very decent. Aaron Connolly as well, a player coming through who looks to be very decent. There wasn't a whole lot that I thought needed to be changed, that I thought needed to be done. What we are doing is we're going to use this 4-2-4 structure, which is loosely based on an old FM Reckonist tactic, or the Reckonist tactic. There's no FM in his name. Uh, there will be a link to that one in the comment section below. We have tried to also use this one once or twice in our Isle of Man series, sometimes with success, sometimes it hasn't. I really want to kind of see how it goes. It's kind of like a super aggressive 4-2-4. I'm thinking of maybe even coming up with like an attacking version that's like a figure eight formation. Uh, but, you know, that's kind of a pipe dream that we might see later on the uh, later on in the save or later on in the week. Really, I'm just testing shit out this week, throwing stuff at the wall. We're going to see what's happened. We're going to have as much fun with it as humanly possible. And that is really how we put this one together. 
It's sweeper keeper and goal. It's a ball playing defender on cover. A ball playing defender as a stopper, mainly not specifically because of Duffy who's in the squad at the moment, but because Lewis Dunk can fulfill that role. You don't see that one often. Ball playing defender on stopper. So I really want to see what it looks like in the match engine itself. We've got two wing backs on attack, which is great. We've got a deep line playmaker and a box to box midfielder in the middle. Two inverted wingers who effectively, once they pick up possession, kind of become like a ten moving into that space. And two forwards up front. I'm trying to work out. I haven't really used it much in many saves. How do we get two forwards up front to work really well together? We did it in the lower league version of Isle of Man. We're doing it now again a little bit when we need to like go after a goal and try and find a winner. I want to see how it goes for an entire season building a front two partnership. I think that's going to be really exciting. Uh, we've also got a positive structure, which is a little bit deeper uh, defensive line. Maybe when we want to drop off, keep possession a little bit more. And also a counter-attacking style, which drops those wingers back a little bit further and the defensive line a little bit further as well. They're all very straightforward. They're not super complex. You can pause on the parts of the video if you want to look at the counter-attacking or the positive or the attacking one. It's got all those instructions there. But really, like if you've watched this many series with us, you kind of know we just go after it a little bit. And in turn, in this structure, there wasn't that much that we actually needed to do. Now, if we look at the transfers out first, see there's quite a few, but most of them aren't ones that we actually did. We did get rid of Dale Stevens. He's gone for 12.75 million pound to China, which is fine. He was just okay. English 30 year old, central midfielder. He wasn't going to get any better. So three star current and potential ability. We can move him on. Uh, Alareja Jahanbach, who I've probably butchered the pronunciation of. 25 year old Iranian winger. He decent, but again, like we didn't really need him. He can't really play as the inverted winger. Oh, I can on the left, but I think there were better options available. sungi has gone to Newcastle. Jenks has gone to Newcastle. I can't even remember if these actually took place while we were the manager. And there were a couple of loan signings that have gone out as well. Pascal Gross is the real one that we did. He's gone to Valencia for the season just to get him off the books. We're not playing with a number 10 in our current structure. Of course, we'll probably struggle and I'll need to bring a number 10 back in, but then it's going to be Aaron Moy. So like, why even ask? Three and a half star current ability and potential ability. Like he's not bad, but he's we don't need him. And 53,000 pound a week, I want to try and get that back in and use that wage on positions where, you know, potentially we actually needed to try and bring some people in, which takes us to the exciting portion. Now, it was tough. We don't have a whole lot of cash to work with for Brighton at the start of the season, but we have managed to bring in a couple. You can see they've got a bunch of different players that they've brought in at the start of this database anyway. Adam Webster, uh, Neil Morpé, Leandro Trossard. Aaron Moy joined on a permanent deal from Huddersfield after an initial loan, but the big ones that we've brought in are Owen Windahl, who I haven't used previously, but he's a wingback who can play as an attacking wingback on that left-hand side. He joins from RZ Alkmaar. We've paid a little bit of cash for him. I think it was five million up front, 15 million pound over the next three years. He looks to be a really good prospect. Um, when we scouted him initially, I think they said he was five-star. He has dropped off a bit, but his current ability, already up to three-star current ability, which is more than capable at a Premier Division level. And I think if he has a good season, at 19 that potential ability might spike up as well and he gets closer to being like a four star five star player 50k a week it's not the cheapest transfer in the world but definitely if you're like a lower division mid table maybe premier division side i think he's more than capable of coming in and doing a wonderful job at left back we're going to see how he goes for this season he gives us good balance he can play further forward as a wing back as well which is fantastic for us and a left-sided player on the left hand side what more could you really ask for now, the other two, because we haven't had that much money to work with that I brought in, are both on loan. Justin Clavett is the first. We're originally looking at him on the left-hand side. We're going to use him on the right instead as an inverted winger. He's very dual-footed, strong on both feet, which is great to see. 20-year-old Dutch international, two caps to his name, but no goals as yet. He joins us on loan from Roma, but I think potentially, if we can get some cash in the budget, if we get some cash a little bit higher up in this transfer budget, we might actually be able to bring him in permanently, which was originally what we were looking to do. If we go to make an offer, you can see they want... Probably more than we're able to offer at the moment. Maybe if we switch this around, 10 and 15, and suggest terms, they're actually fine with that uh, with 50% of the profit from the next sale. So maybe we can bring him in permanently before this episode is over. But he joins as well. And then we were looking for a forward. I was going to try and bring in Boadu. I originally had ideas that maybe we were just going to sign after we found Windale. We were just maybe going to raid um, Alkmaar a little bit and bring in the likes of Hakon Evshan maybe or Calvin Stengs or Miran Boadu to try and fill in those positions we want. But they just want way too much cash. Uh, when we made an offer on him, you can see they want close to 50 million, which we just, we don't have it. And even then, if we got that accepted, we'd have to pay additional amounts in terms of like agent fees, signing on fees, all that sort of stuff. We're just, he's out of our range at the moment. Unfortunately, maybe in January, we can go back in and try and bring him across. There are quite a few players that I wanted to play as before FM20 ends. He's one of them. Another one is this gentleman who you may recognize having had a fantastic Champions League campaign for Bayern Munich. He wouldn't come across either. 
we had a transfer bid uh, accepted for I think about 15 million pound. He wouldn't enter negotiations. We had a loan bid also accepted. He wouldn't enter negotiations or he rejected the contract or something like that. It would have been great to have him. Maybe in January, we'll have a look. There are a few players I've got like a bucket list for that I want to play with at some point in FM20, whether that's online in a save that you guys get to see as well or offline just doing some random shit. We'll find out as time moves on. The last one though that we brought in instead, Troy Parrott. He joins from Tottenham on loan for the season. Only 17 years of age, decent already. Already three-star current ability and five-star potential at just 17 is very impressive, I think. He doesn't have anything in his transfer or sorry, in his contract with us that leads to like a future fee or anything like that. We are paying all of his wages, which is fine. That's not a problem. 10K isn't a whole lot, but maybe he's someone that we go and try and make a bid on. I think if we make an offer right now, they want ridiculous money, like 75 million pound. We're not going to have that anytime soon. And they want percentages of the next profit. We're just not in a position to buy a player like that. But I think he'll be good for us. And I think even at 17, he could do a good job leading the line. He's got good finishing attributes. He's got good movement, good technical attributes as well. I think he's going to be a good player that potentially moves into that role. We do have some backups available if we need to go through that anyway. But that's it. Three new signings. That's all I really ever try and do in these one season wonder saves. I don't want to like revolutionize a squad. I kind of want to show people how to either improve on what they've got with a couple of signings here or there or make the most out of what's already in the squad. And there is some very, very good talent in the squad. I think their defensive line's very good. Uh, Adam Webster, we spoke about earlier, they picked him up from Bristol City. He looks to be quite tidy, a ball-playing defender on defend or as a covering ball-playing defender. He looks quite good. Four-star potential ability. I think he'll get to that relatively quickly. Under 24, either footed, very impressive stuff. They have got, it's probably worth noting before I forget, one of the most in-demand players in English football at the moment, uh, Ben White, also out on loan at Leeds. If he gets anything relating to a knock, he's coming back. I'm going to recall that loan immediately. I can't do it at the moment. Or can I? No, I can't do it at the moment, but maybe maybe in future weeks we might keep an eye on bringing uh, Ben White back to play in the back line for us as well. Lewis Dunk, we already mentioned briefly, one English cap to his name. I'm really excited to see what a ball-playing defender on stopper is going to be like. He's got all the attributes for the role. He's quite decent. He's made a good amount of appearances at a Premier Division level now as well. I think he's going to be super important for the club. Ezekiel Shalotto will be the wing-back on attack on the other side. It's always interesting to see wing-backs with an attacking instruction at any club. I'm really interested to see how he goes. Technically, not the best but good mental attributes, decent physical uh, shape and everything for a Premier Division player. One Italian cap to his name. It'll be interesting to see if he adds to that at all throughout the course of his career. We've already spoken about in depth Aaron Moy, but he's just an absolute beast. We're going to build everything around him. He's a DLP on support by default, uh, but we're going to try and play him as a box-to-box, -box, get him a little bit further forward, get him taking some strikes from distance. He's got pretty much free license to do whatever he wants this year, so hopefully he takes advantage. He'll play alongside Davy Proper who, of course, joined from Eindhoven a few seasons ago for Brighton. A good, good player. Excellent passing range. Good mental attributes as well. Solid physical attributes for a Premier Division player. He'll play as a DLP on support alongside him when he's fit and available. Spoke about Clivert, but Trossard on the other wing. He was a new signing from Genk in Belgium. I'm actually not sure how he did in his first season in the Premier Division or with Brighton. If you are a Brighton fan... Let me know in the comment section below how his first year actually went. But he looks pretty decent in the game. I think he's got a solid, solid future ahead of him. Good right footed player, playing as an inverted winger on that side. We've also got a backup behind him who I'm going to try and teach to play that role, which is Alexis McAllister, who joins from Argentinas Juniors. It looks like he's been at Boca Juniors at some point, maybe on loan or something like that throughout the course of the season. He's number 10, but he's got very good current ability, very good potential. I'm going to try and get him working as an inverted winger on that left-hand side. He's the only wonder kid that they've really got on the books, unless Troy Parrott is already a wonder kid. Not yet, but maybe soon. So he's one that we might keep an eye on for that left wing role as well. And then also up front, Aaron Connolly, only 19 years of age, two Irish guys playing up front together. Should be interesting to see if they replicate that partnership at an international level. But he's a good player, solid striker, mainly one for the future. And I think you see that with a lot of the different squads that I put out there. We try and get players out there that are going to get better throughout the course of the season, not necessarily the finished article right now. But it's super solid, like three and a half star pretty much across the board for quite a few of the players here and good potential on the other players that we're using as well. I could see Window finishing the season at four stars. I could see the likes of Connolly and Parrott if they hit the ground running, find the back of the net, scoring quite regularly. And then we've got a whole bunch of different experience in the rest of the squad as well. We've got the likes of Neil Morpay to bring on. He's only 22, which is hard to believe. He looks about 37 years of age, but he can come on and do a job off the bench if the youngsters aren't doing that well. Glenn Murray's in the squad to try and guide them a little bit. 35 years of age now for him. 
Lewis Dunk's in there as well. Oh, no, sorry, not Lewis Dunk. I'm trying to talk about Shane Duffy. Uh, he's in there as well, 27-year-old Irish player, full caps to his name. Decent, solid, no-nonsense centre-back. We're not really playing with that. We're playing with ball playing defenders, so he's a third choice. But, like, there are some good players in this squad. I think more than capable of finishing up towards middle of the table, maybe top half if they go on a good run or maybe if you find the right additions for your squad itself. As far as the preseason schedule goes, it's been pretty straightforward. We haven't played anyone massive, to be honest. We've just basically kind of played name teams in and around us at any particular point. There was a preseason friendly cup as well. We beat Payok uh, from Greece 3-0 and then lost on penalties to Espanyol, who are a La Liga side over in Spain. Penalties are a lottery. We're not going to worry too much about that. But otherwise, like we've had some good, good wins, good morale-boosting performances in there as well, which is good to see. And hopefully, it means we can carry it on to good form today because we have got a tough run to start the season. We play Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, and Manchester United within our first five fixtures. Uh, West Ham, the other one in that, which are away from home, might be tricky. But I think that's a key and critical one that we need to really try and get three points on. But as far as starts go, like that is absolutely brutal. We might just see how we go through these opening games and then maybe come back and kind of review how we've done once we've had the opportunity to pick up some points against the likes of, you know, like Everton, we could maybe beat. Watford, we should be beating. Norwich, Aston Villa, Wolves, Burnley. Like those are the sides that we really need to be getting our points against, not worrying too much about the top five, top six teams throughout the course of the season. Now, the division itself, the season preview is always very interesting. We are expected to finish in 16th, 1,000 to 1 odds, which is the same as the promoted sides, the same as Burnley to actually win the league. And our key players that they've highlighted are Justin Clivert and Aaron Moy, funnily enough. There you go. I knew I had the ball cap on for a reason. But again, like, I don't think we're that terrible a side. Like, we've got some decent players. We're definitely not, like, we're not going to make the, prim- uh, the Champions League or anything like that. Don't spe- expect uh, European football in our first season. But I think we've got the ability to really, like, cause issues to quite a few teams. Maybe right back's a bit of a weakness. Maybe we give Tariq Lamptey a bit of a start or a bit of play. He can play as a wing back on defend or on attack. Maybe if Shalotto doesn't find his base, we bring another youngster in. Maybe Trossard doesn't settle that well, we bring McAllister in. In midfield, we've got some flexibility as well. Steven Alzate, decent you know, youth prospect, can play at the tank, can play a little bit deeper. So there's a lot of different stuff we can do. I'm happy with the overall strength of the squad, and I'm hopeful for the season that we can get a top 10 finish, which will be key and critical that we start and get off to a good start given the shit run of fixtures that we've got, which means we are going to jump forward now and have a look at the starting lineup for the match against Arsenal. So, as you guys can see here, we're going with Ryan in goals, the sweeper keeper on support. Webster making his debut for the club alongside Duffy at the back. Dunk will likely come in for Duffy once he's fit. Uh, Windar making his debut after joining from AZ Alkma at left wing back. Shalotto at right wing back. Davy Proper will anchor midfield as the DLP on support. Aaron Moy will play alongside him and wear the captain's arm man for the season. Trossard and Clivard make their debuts. Connolly and Parrott make their debuts as well. Quite a few debutants uh, for us. And Arsenal have quite a few of their own as well. They're playing a 4-2-3-1, which is, if you've been watching our Isle of Man series, the most common shape that you see in the Premier Division. Lino in goal. David Luiz and Chambers is the defensive partnership they've gone with. Kolasinic at left wing back. Cedric making his debut at right wing back. Xhaka Rolanka midfield alongside Sebelos making his debut. Ozil plays in this particular version, in this alternate universe at the 10. Aubameyang on the left wing wearing Captain Zambian. Pepe on the right. He's very, very good in football manager if you weren't aware. And Lacazette leading the line up top. It's a strong lineup and a lot of attacking firepower. Assertively, we're going to say... We know we're underdogs, but go out there and give everyone a good performance. I'm going to assertively tell the defense as well that I've got faith in them to do well. But no, no massive pressure, nothing to really worry about. It's a it's a low pressure environment early part of the season, particularly with an away trip to the Emirates. And given this start to the season, I'm not going to panic if we do go a little while before finding a result. They have had a strike here, and then Trossard's put it into a weird area. Kolasinac comes forward. Now Xhaka. Press is good. Aaron Moy, there he is, the captain, leading by example, winning the ball back in a great area. And going on a bit of a run here, wide right area, goes the strike. And Lino with a good save. Maybe could have looked to try and hang one back post. But, you know, I'm not going to I'm not gonna question Aaron Moy. You know, it's not any player that can just randomly get me to uh, wear a ball cap throughout the course of a series. Looks more like a swimming cap. But I think that's more due to the budget and what I paid for the value of this one. Ball in behind here for Lacazette. And he's got the strike away. Matty Ryan with an excellent save uh, pushes it out for the corner. Highlights at both ends in the opening seven minutes. Ozil with the corner. Webster with a good header away. Jacka might try and fire this one back in. Back across to Sebelos. Now out to Aubameyang. Knocks it down for David Luiz, who stayed forward. Good reverse pass to Lacazette. And thankfully, the drive. Very, very tame effort. 
Matty Ryan does well to come out and claim. Another highlight again, 10 minutes, and we've had more highlights than we get in some entire halves. Good switch out there from Windahl. Finds Aaron Moy. Now Clivett. Reverse pass to Connolly. Can he square the ball back up? He's got a lot of work to do. Finds Clivett. Backstick ball towards Trossard, and he just had to get that on target. Keep was scrambling, but over the crossbar, we let him off the hook. Windahl finds Parrott. Now Trossard. Deep ball towards Connolly. It's headed away well by David Louise. Ball in behind for Trossard. Can he find a good cutback? Towards the edge of the area. Cliver was there, but it gets cleared away. Resets now through Duffy. It's just a lotto. Duffy, we're going to have to be careful of it. You can tell he's not super comfortable playing the ball the way that we want him to in that stopper roll. Webster, forward now. Can we work it out to the left? Matty Ryan, look to the left back. Goes to Duffy instead. Now to Shalotto, who does have some time in front of him. We're moving the ball around quite well side to side. Shalotto's lost out to Aubameyang, and this pace on the counter is going to be a danger. Aubameyang skipped past a couple and gets a strike. It's a wonderful save from Matty Ryan. You can see just that issue once they pick up possession. they got the pace to just walk past our defensive line. Deep ball in. Shalotto with a good header away. Pepe, first drill involvement we see from him. Moy wins it back again, and Connolly can come forward on the counter. Slow down. Wait for your support. Don't do anything silly. It's back stick runners there, and it's towards there. Cedric with the flick on header. And out for the corner kick. So we're getting some good counter attacks going when we win the ball back in good areas. We might turn this over to be the league table. We can see City have taken a 2 0 lead early on against Crystal Palace. So they're already setting down a bit of marker for the season. Throw in here. Shalotto finds Connolly. Now Clive it. It's closed down well, but Proper does very well mopping up at the base of midfield. Back to Duffy. Cross now to Webster. Move it to the left hand side, please. Goes all the way back to Matty Ryan. Into Duffy. Long ball forward is pretty poor. Kolasinac wins it back, and Aubameyang sends Lacazette in behind from distance. Good save again, Matty Ryan. You can tell Duffy's just not super comfortable on the ball. Maybe if we get to half time, maybe we look at making him a no-nonsense defender for the second half. Webster with the header away. Now Connolly, and the highlight comes to an end, but there's an immediate throw in here. Cedric with the ball, or Suarez. I don't know what he prefers. We'll go with Cedric because that's what's on the back of his kit. Moy wins it back in a great area again. Connolly finds Parrott. He's got a lot of work to do. Finds proper edge of the area. Connolly with the first time strike. First goal of the season for him. And we take a lead against Arsenal away. And it's actually a debut goal for Aaron Connolly as well. Making the most of a lot of his potential. I keep catching my reflection in the side mirror where OBS is kind of showing what's on. And I just look like I'm wearing a condom on my head. But that's fine. Proper. Good reverse pass to Connolly. And he smashes that one top corner on his left peg. Is he left footed? I've got no idea. I really haven't looked into these players at all. But we're off to a good start here, early part of the season. And with 30 minutes played, we might just use Demand more shout just to give everyone some focus through to halftime. If we make it to half 1-0 up, it's going to put all sorts of pressure on uh, Arsenal in the second stanza. Aubameyang finds Kolasinac on the overlap. First, furthest forward we've seen him get, and so cut back ball to Lacazette. They've pulled it back relatively quickly. Matt Ryan got a big chunk of it, but we're going to check this one out in three dimensions. It's really the first, I think, that we've seen of the uh, fullbacks for Arsenal getting further forward. Kolasinac, the big boy. Does quite well. Gets to the byline. Cuts it back to a good area. Luck is out with a good strike. And Ryan did get a big chunk of it, but could only force it into the back of the net. Had a fair bit of pace on it. We know Arsenal are good. We know they can carve teams up. So I probably shouldn't complain too much, but it still feels a bit bitter. Cedric with the throw in. Deep on the right-hand side. Trossard wins it back. Looks to send Window on the overlap. He can carry it forward here through midfield. Tries a good little reverse pass to Parrott. Can he find the finish? He can indeed. Troy Parrott with his first goal of the season. The uh, youngsters up front doing the job for us so far. And the Tottenham boy will love scoring against Arsenal. You can already tell that one. Window with a great run here and a good little reverse pass. Just takes the defender out of it entirely. Parrott still had a lot to do though. Takes a touch, gets it on his right peg, goes near post. Lino doesn't come out quick enough to shore the angle or to get close enough to the ball to prevent the strike. And 2-1 up, we're doing quite well. We seem to be handling Arsenal relatively effectively, but I have a feeling this might be the type of game where they score five goals in the second half. Halftime's called, though. 16 shots, 10 on target, 57% of the ball for Arsenal. Five shots, four on target, 43% possession for Brighton. But I think we've had the same amount of highlights. Assertively, I'm happy with the performance so far. Keep it up. Why? Well, let's not complain. But let's maybe do that one thing, which is uh, let's change Duffy to a no-nonsense centre-back as a stopper. Instead of a ball player, if he's not comfortable, I'd rather not see him lose the ball five times in the second half. He's gone long forward there. Connolly did well to challenge. Going to recover possession here. Moy's got a yellow card. We're going to have to keep an eye on. He's so critical to everything that we do. Uh, Xhaka sends Lacazette into the channel. He's a bit isolated, though. Just stand him up, boys. Don't do anything silly. Cut back to Aubameyang, edge of the area. Sebelos out to Cedric on the overlap. Gets the strike away. It's a good finish, to be fair, from the right back. He gets a goal in his debut after joining from Southampton. It's a good strike. We'll check it out here in three dimensions. 
and Lacazette did well. Finds Aubameyang. I thought Aubameyang might pull the trigger. Instead, he goes to Sebelos, who finds the overlapping run, and Cedric, very good strike, low and hard across the keeper into the far left-hand corner. And twice we've led. They've got a corner here, though. Pepe to take towards near post. Window with a good header away. Trossard finds Connolly. What can we do here? 2v2 situation. Skips past one challenge. Skips past a second. He's gotten goal side. Oh, and he's put it straight at Lino. Wonderful run, though, from the young Irishman. I tell you what, if this is a show of what Connolly and Parrott are going to do all season, we're going to be in great shape. Long ball forward here, though, from the goal kick is given away. Lewis sends a bomb yank down into the channel. Clive wins it back in a wonderful area. We come forward again. Skips past a couple. Played to Parrott. Can he find the finish? He goes near post, and Lino with an excellent save. Wonderful run there from Clive and a fantastic weighted ball in behind. Moy with the corner, of course. Trossard back to Moy again. Looks for Webster near post. Got a lot of work to do, and it's actually brought back because I think Moy was offside in the build-up. Maybe just put the ball straight in the middle, Aaron. We're through an hour. Let's uh, have a look at some subs as well. Charlotto's got a yellow card. We're going to bring on Tariq Lamptey for, I think, what will be his debut, winger on, wing back on attack. And Moy, I'm going to leave out there. I'm going to trust in my captain that he can uh, remain responsible while on a yellow card. We're going to take off Trossard. I'm going to bring on McAllister as a left winger, inverted winger on support, cutting back into that number 10 position, which is his favorite role. So it's two young players coming on. I'm going to keep our faith in the youth. And we're going to also use a get creative shout. Clivert's won it back in a great area. And he's got support here if he can find it. He's brought down from behind by Kolasinac. Is this going to be a second yellow card for him? He's been on that yellow for a while. And it is indeed. So they've gone down to 10 men. They've brought on Ainsley Maitland-Niles for Pepe. It might see a change in shape for them. We don't even see the resulting free kick from Aaron Moy. Like Aaron Moy is the only reason that we're here. That's why we need to see every free kick and set piece that he takes. Lamptey with the ball forward. Connolly does very well. And to turn the defender as well. Peels away from David Luiz. Gets the strike away. And what a finish that is from Aaron Connolly. Holy shit. Second goal of the season for him. Wonderful, wonderful goal. We're going to check this out in three dimensions. He just rolls David Luiz. And like, I know it's a video game, but that does happen to David Luiz quite a bit. Connolly comes forward. Gets towards the edge of the area. You just see the space starting to close in on him. And it's a wonderful effort. Kiwi gets nothing on it. It clips the underside of the crossbar. And what a way to announce yourself on your debut in the Premier Division. Shades of uh, Wayne Rooney's debut back in the day. Webster, forward now. We might be guilty of overplaying it a little bit. He's gone long forward. Parrot challenges quite well. And Maitland Niles, good header back to Lino in goal. Thrown to Xhaka. We've got to get closer to the ball, lads. Moy comes across now. Sebelos, proper. Ball out wide now to Cedric for Arsenal. Switch to Aubameyang. Just stand him up. Don't do anything silly. Lamptey does very well. Ryan with the long ball forward. Brought back down by Cedric. Skips past McAllister's channel. That might be... Oh, no, he's done quite well, actually. I was about to say that might be uh, where he struggles, the defensive side of the game, but he won it back. Ball back with Arsenal now. Ozil looks for Lacazette in behind. He's gotten there first, and it was a good save from Matt Ryan. Lacazette first one to the uh, rebound, though. We'll check it out in three dimensions here and as to what happened with the save. It's a good ball in from Ozil, and that's not a massive shocker. Just weights it perfectly. It's a good first save from Ryan. Actually, it's not even a save. It just hits him. And then uh, Lacazette stays on his feet and uh, gets to the second ball to tap into the back of the empty net. Ten minutes remain. We've got one more sub ahead. So let's let this highlight play out before we do anything. Lamptey with the throw. Finds Clivert. Ball towards a good area. Moy, edge of the area. Back to Proper. Now out to Lamptey. Can you wrap your foot around the ball, young man? He gets into the box. Puts it towards Parrot. And Parrot with his second goal of the game as well. Holy shit. All right, we've got to sort something out defensively. We'll check out this uh, play, replay in three dimensions. But then we are going to jump in and have a look at making a last sub to try and shore up our midfield. Lamptey with a wonderful run here. Maybe we should start him more often. Parrot with an excellent header. Lena gets a big chunk of it. But who's that defender? Chambers. It's not a strong back line for Arsenal. I know any Arsenal fans watching, that might not be a massive surprise to you. But they've not been bad. I might go with the defensive line. Well, they've conceded three. It hasn't been horrific. Maybe we take off Clive, but he's only on 66% conditioning. Solly March can come on. He's a bit more comfortable in that role as well. Maybe some fresh legs on that left-hand side will uh, give him something else to deal with. We're going to use a demand more shout as well, just to give everyone some focus, hopefully, through to the full-time whistle. we are got to throw in here. Connolly is peeled off into a great spot. Maitland-Niles with the tackle, but Connolly will get there again. Cleared forward. Duffy should recover. Puts it into a good area. Parrot challenges. Sevalos tries to clear it away, but it falls to March off the bench. Ball around here for Parrot, who's clipped the upside or clipped the upright. It's eventually dragged back, though, for the offside. Good little passage of play there from everyone. McAllister involved, March involved. Wide free kick here from Moy. He's so good from these set pieces. It's headed away, and Lacazette comes forward. He's got three defenders back there, so we should be able to stand him up. But he's peeling off to the right hand side, and he's gotten goal side. Wonderful save from Matt Ryan. 
He's had some big saves in this one. And can we hold on for a famous victory? All beat against 10 men, but away from home. Big, big results start the season. Sebelos with the ball. Back to Maitland-Niles. Now out to Ozil, left wing. Deep ball towards Lacazette. And thankfully, it is brought back for offside. As the referee calls full time, 26 shots, 16 on target, 56% possession. 14 shots, 11 on target, 44% of the ball for us. And a 4-3 victory. A wonderful performance. Connolly and Parrott with the doubles on their debuts. Passionately, we're going to say that was really special, lads. Nobody gave you a chance and you performed magnificently, which they did. It does see us going to sixth spot on the table, which is absolutely crazy. Arsenal uh, in 12th, so they haven't dropped off by miles either. Brighton beat Arsenal in a thrilling encounter. Aaron Connolly, a 9.0 match rating, gets the man of the match award. We'll let our assistant do the post-match press conference. I don't really care, to be honest. Connolly, let's give him a bit of praise, though. He was magnificent. If he can uh, keep up that level of uh, performance throughout the course of the season, we're going to be in great shape. And Clive is happy to enter negotiations. Let's see what we can try and bring him in for. He'd be a star player, which he would. Maybe we get him down to closer to maybe like 80K, I think is probably more reasonable, Patrick. Or Justin. Patrick's your dad. Sorry, buddy. So maybe we get him down to 80K, a bit less of a signing on fee, a bit less of an agent fee, but maybe we increase the sell-on fee percentage. Will he go for that? He wants 90K, which isn't the worst in the world. Yeah, we can, we can find a way to make that work. So there we go. Maybe by the time we come back in tomorrow's episode, we will have Justin Clivert on the books, which would be fantastic for us. And I think what we'll do is we might jump ahead quite a bit. So I think we want to get through this stage here where we're probably not going to pick up too many points uh, with a lot of these like Chelsea, Liverpool, Man United games. But what we might do is jump forward to maybe October and when we've played roughly about 10 games in the league itself. It'll let us know like how we've started, how we're doing, and we might play the two home games uh, against Wolves and Burnley because I think there will be two good fixtures, two good tests, and it'll give us a bit more of a marker as to how our actual form has started in the early part of the season. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate that portion the most. If you want to go that extra mile, help celebrate the start of a new season, help celebrate the start of a new save, another one season wonder, you can drop a like on this video. You can also subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date on all of our videos as they release to FM21 and all other kinds of dumb shit that I do, like wear a ball cup for a one season wonder save and whatever else. But like I said at the start, more than anything, I just appreciate you guys watching. That's the part that means the most to me. As always, I've been Sean, and I'll see you all again in the mixer.